Welcome to Part of My Imagination. I'm Imagination and you guys are the Imaginers. Welcome. If this is your first time, my name's Jasmine and welcome back if this is like your not your first time here. Uh, um, so today I'm going to be doing my April wrap up. I know it's very late. It is June when I'm recording this, June 1st to be exact. But anyways, yes. So I am actually going to be doing a different wrap up. Normally I would sit here and like blab and blab and blab about like my favorite books ever. Of not favorite books, but every book that I read. And that's just not possible because like the videos are so long and I know you guys are not watching the full like 15, 20 minute video of my wrap ups. So what I'm going to be doing is I am just going to be telling you the books that I read, the star rating for it, a brief synopsis, and then I'm going to pick maybe two or three of my favorite picks for the month. It might not be my favorite read or it might not be the five star read, but it is going to be a book that I really, really enjoyed. I did read a total of 15 books, so let's just get into it. Okay, so the first book that I read in the month of April is Let's Go Swimming on Doom Doomsday by Natalie C. Anderson. I gave this book five out of five stars. It was honestly phenomenal. I loved it so much. And basically this book is about a Somalian a boy who is a refugee in, I wanna say Congo, but don't quote me. I can't remember the country. So basically it is to told in his perspective of present day and the past and essentially he gets captured by the CIA and the CIA make him go undercover to join one of the malicious groups that are targeting um, villages and they're targeting the government and you know they're trying to take back their government and they're using their religion as the sole reason of why they're doing these things. So his brother is actually one of the leaders in the malicious group and he has to go on a cover and report information back to the CIA. Um, his present day is following him actually spending time with a um, UN US embassy agent and she's trying to help him find a family to live with and stuff like that. He ends up going to this all girls school and these girls are victims of people that were in the this malicious group. And honestly, it just seeing his growth and seeing his struggles was really, she, Natalie C. Anderson captured it so well. Her other book that I read was City of Saints and Thieves by also by Natalie C. Anderson. It was one of my favorite as well. I don't know why, but she just captures at least from, for me, she captures these stories so well and just like her writing is, just read this book. Okay. Next is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, five stars. One of my new favorite books of all time. This series, I'm telling you what, I cannot wait to get to the second one. But basically this book and oh, oh, listen, I just, you just need to read it. You literally just need to read it. So this book is basically about a world where there are people that have powers and people around them are fearful of those people that have this power that can control nature, essentially. They can control the world and things like that. And it's, unex it's explained, but like, I don't want to explain it for you. Um, so People either kill these people um, at a young age because at a young age they don't know how to control their power so they end up hurting people in their villages and things. And every couple centuries the world will shake or break or whatever and people have to like keep rebuilding society. So it follows three girls. One is a child that ends up getting found out and a guy from this school that actually trains these people with powers comes and takes her from this family. And she's battling on why her family would give her away, why her family treats her this way, and learning the new steps of this teacher. Then you have a student that is actually in the school 
and it's following her having to basically go along with the one of the top he is the top t uh not teacher but he is one of the top ones with the mat i can't remember the names because i read this so long ago and i'm gonna do a reread but yes so he's like the top person with these powers like He's like a master's or something like this. It's, it's based on like rings. He's like a 10th ring or something like that. That's what, actually, it's based on rings. But it's like a 10th ring or 12th ring or something like that. And she has to follow him to go on this mission. And then the last person is a older lady who has powers and has been hiding it from her village. And they intertwine. And I'm, I'm telling you this ending, I did not, like I did not even think that that would be an ending but it was and it's just the magic system the world i just want to learn so much more and who when i when they say nk jemison is like a queen a black queen for writing fantasy they did not lie they did i i'm telling you read this book like time now but we're gonna move on Next, I read Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. I gave this book four out of five stars. And not my favorite. Oh, sorry. My, uh, you know, boob holder is falling. Anyways, but not, not my favorite of her books. But honestly, this book was, I'm going to say phenomenal a lot. But this book was honestly amazing. It, brief synopsis, it's about a girl who is charged with murdering a baby and she gets put into a home <sighs> she was put in jail at a very young age and then she ended up getting sent to a home for like detentionees or something i can't remember the full term but obviously i read this back in april but um yes and it's a psychological thriller and yes it's just following her saying why she didn't actually kill this baby and i'm gonna leave it there next was a torch against the night by saba tahir i gave this book five out of five stars it's literally the best thing ever it's probably going to be one of my next favorite series of all time um the first book being an ember and ashes if you don't know what the series is about it is about a girl named lila who whose brother gets captured and her grandparents get killed and she has to go to the rebels to find a way to get her brother out of this jail. It also follows Elias, um, excuse Elias, well, Elias. It also follows Elias, who is one of the mask who ends up torturing and killing people in this village. Well, he doesn't do that, but that's what the masks do. And he is training to be the ultimate of basically these soldiers. There's conflictions, there's political things, and there's love, and it's honestly phenomenal. Just read it. Because I can't talk about this book if you don't read the first one. So, just read it. Next up is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rawlings. I gave this book three out of five stars. Um, it wasn't great, it wasn't bad. <sighs> I've seen the movies, it follow, the book follow a lot, the movies follow along with <laughs> the book wow princess i don't you didn't hear me say that anyways um i am reading this book because it is my best friend's favorite series of all time just like multiple people but if you don't know who my best friend is it's princess over at castle library i will have her link down in the description but yes i read this book i enjoyed it enough but obviously it's not gonna be right i've missed the harry potter wave so moving on Next, the book, a book that I don't have, I read Serpent and Dove by Shelby Murhuren. I gave this book four out of five stars. This book, loved it, loved it, loved it. If you love witches, you're going to love this book. Um, I, I know there were a lot of things in the book community about this book and how they didn't like it. I really enjoyed it. It is following, basically there's different witches that have different things. And essentially... This witch has to marry someone that is pretty much like a priest. Like, <laughs> magic, witches, and religion. It's honestly so phenomenal. And the plot twist, didn't see it coming. I can't wait for the second book to come out. So I would just go ahead and check this book out. 
All right, the next book is another book that I do not own, and that is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I give this book four stars. Um, very, very tough and interesting book. This book is following multiple perspectives, but basically the book is evolved around this girl named Melanie. And Melanie is a girl who grew up with her grandmother and grandfather and her dad and her mom wasn't really in the picture and it goes between how melody was affected by not having her mother around and the relationship that she has with her father it follows a story a perspective of the dad talking about how he was affected by the mother leaving coming back and forth and back and forth the grandparents as well and it obviously touches on the mom the mom was a young single um not not young and single but she was a young pregnant mom and it just kind of follows that storyline and it, they all okay all the stories kind of intertwine in each other and it was uh, it was a really good read and i would definitely recommend this too. and just checking it out next is the star touch queen by Roshki koski i gave this book four stars i'm looking down because of my phone but yes i really really enjoyed this book it follows a girl it follows a girl who was a princess and she was pretty much like the black sheep of her family and so her father tries to marry her off to a tribe that is fighting with the kingdom now she gets swept away to a, another like universe and she ends up falling in love with pretty much the grim reaper and that's all i want to tell you because i want to leave it open for you but I next i read the librarian of auschwitz by antonio eterby eterby and this is a translated work and essentially this book is based on real life experiences so auschwitz prisoners obviously during the holocaust um when they were put into the camps there were people that bring books because books were prohibited obviously they didn't want any works they didn't want any knowledge being passed along so there were librarians at this um camp that put themselves in danger to keep these books alive and to be able to educate the the kids and keep their hopes up during this time it follows multiple perspectives it's very heart-wrenching knowing that i mean just think everything about the holocaust is heart-wrenching but even more so that to put yourself in more danger during a time that you know you could lose your life for certain things um, just to pass on that knowledge because we all know there's so much knowledge in books and to want to keep that alive is like phenomenal and I like praise the people that did this and this is just covering one camp this is not even just a plethora of people that have probably done this in the multiple of um, camps that they had so I would highly highly recommend this book. Next, I read Adorned by Chi, and this is by uh, Jaqui A and Magus Atu. This is the cutest little comic book or manga, like, ever. I gave it five out of five stars because, mm, yes, it was, honestly, what I was most disappointed about it was that it wasn't long enough. So, I'm not going to compare. I'm not going to compare. But, basically, it's following a, a group of people that have to save society and they get magical powers so it's kind of like a black sailor moon and like yes yes we're here for it that's all i'm going to say read it it's short you're going to support black authors support black uh, artists i was going to say authors again but yes just check it out all right, next I read Moonstruck by Grace Ellis and Shay Beagle. And I gave this graphic novel three stars. Um, it was short, kind of to the point, not really, kind of like skipped around. Um, it's obviously about a girl who is a werewolf that goes on this date with another girl who is a werewolf obviously there's different types of monsters and her best friend this girl right here her best friend ends up going to on the first date they end up going to this like magical circus thing 
and her best friend who is a don't tell me centaur gets his lay his horse legs taken and they are trying to figure out how to get it back it it was cute for what it was on surface value but the main character was kind of annoying so yeah I'm just gonna move on next i read scarlet by marissa meyer this is the second book in the lunar chronicles this is pretty much a retelling of multiple princesses you have cinder cinderella crest which is um rapunzel winter which is obviously snow white and then this one is red riding hood um, and it's basically combine, combining those stories together in one. And I gave the first one three stars. Um, I gave the second one three stars. It's interesting enough for me to want to continue reading on. Um, this one was probably my favorite over the first one. Um, just because you're fine, you're digging into the story and you're finally figuring out why said person is, um, or in Cinder, she's a cyborg and you're kind of like dig digging more in it because I'm telling you what, in the first one, she was annoying. Not communicating. Oh, so many problems could have been solved. And honestly, so many problems could have been solved in this one if they just communicated. And that's that. Okay, next I read The Mercies um, by uh, Korean Mill... Millwood Hargrave. I don't know why that was so hard to say. I gave this book four out of four stars. I actually listened to it on my Libby. I seen the book cover of it on Libby and I was just like, oh, that looks very interesting. I actually thought it was more like Native American and that's why I picked it up. It was not, but it was still a phenomenal read. And this is one that I'm gonna actually like a little bit dive into. So this book is about, or it's set in the 1600s in this small, very, very small town. Hold on, let me make sure. Nor Norway. Yes, it's a, there's a very, very small town in Norway. And essentially, it's following true, technically true, of, it's using the true events to create this story and combining it into, into one. So essentially, there's this small town and there is this large wave or like storm that ends up taking all the men out in this village and the reason why the men all die is because they are all boaters they all they work on the boats they are fishers and stuff like that and they all end up dying and so now it's just all the women minus like maybe children that were boys and stuff like that so it is literally just all women on this island well they have someone has to do the work Mind you, this is in the 1600s. So like women were not doing hard laborish things. Um, and it follows people that are more, not, I don't, yes, Christian. There is people that follow more the Christian base. And then there's the um, people that follow a different type of religion. And they're kind of clashing, right? So the women that follow a different religion or belief system are um how do i put this the ones that are better to step up and go out and get on the boats because they know that things need to be done or they're not going to survive someone somewhere catches with that oh no these women are not out here policing themselves up so some king sends a man out here to be like pretty much the mayor of this town he's super religious and he's also known for killing women because they are witches. And uh, it's it follows friendships, heartache, uh, family relations, like religion relations. And it honestly, it's just like, it literally was a very good read. And I highly would actually recommend it. Um, and like, yeah, I would honestly, I would just check this book out, especially because some of the events in here are true events. The witch killings are true events and the storm are true events. And yeah, it's just a perspective of all women in a freaking village. And here comes some dude fucking it up for everybody. <laughs> so I would check this out. 
All right, next I read Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I know people have issues with the author. People didn't really enjoy this book. All you need to know is that I enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. It is following a girl who is a saint who is raised up in the church. And the reason why she is so phenomenal is because she can talk to the gods and that is how she gets her powers or her, or her magic, excuse me. And then it is following a prince who is at, his country is at war with the country that the saints live in. And he draws his magic from blood magic. He ends up coming into this church to actually specifically find this girl to pull her power out and take it. And she ends up getting away, obviously, and runs into a raggedy crew. One of the guys is actually a, a man, or quote unquote, he's considered a monster. He's not a monster, but he's considered like, cause you know, war. Anyways, um, yeah, so he tries to team up with the saint and they are gonna go undercover into the country that has the blood magic um, per people and they are going to try to destroy the kingdom. Plot twist, love, anything you could think in a book, it's in here. I I don't know why, I, I just enjoyed it. I really liked it, I loved the like Russianish, Russian, Russianist. Wow. Okay. The Russian theme to it. It was really interesting. And, and I follow along with the audiobook, so they had Russian accents, and it was literally phenomenal. I loved it. It was so good. All right. Um, and last but not least, I read Bingo Love by T. Franklin, Jen Stagon, and Joy San. Um, I'm gonna. There we go. Anyways, I gave this a four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this. It was so cute. Um, so essentially, is it about two girls who ended up falling in love during a time where it was not okay to um, be gay or be a lesbian or be anything, honestly. And yes, they fall in love and when their families find out about it, they get separated and she ends up having to move somewhere else. They end up getting married to men, obviously, having a family and growing old. And later on, she comes back into town and sees her and at a bingo. This, I'm not going to spill it, but honestly, this, t this teaches you so much about how sometimes you have to, you do things to please your family and even if it's not something that you want to do and also... It's never too late. It's never too late to find your true love and have an adventure. All right, that's all that I have for you guys today. Be sure to check out my description where you will find easy ways to contact me as well as all the books and channels that I talked about. I hope you enjoyed this video enough to like, comment, and subscribe. If not, just imagine that you didn't come back again. Until next time, keep imagining. Thank you.